is up guys Stark here and today's character spotlight we are taking a look at Geronimo so Geronimo is going to be a three-star caster and he will go up to level 70 and at level 70 he will have 9123 HP and 6857 attack so this will rank him 86th overall in HP and 81st overall in attack if you do decide to max him out though, he will end up with 14,369 HP and 11,280 attack. So now moving on here to his servant skills, and there is not a whole lot to talk about here. I'm just going to do them all at once honestly because they all do the exact same thing pretty much. He has three skills, one for buster, one for arts, and one for quick, and they will all increase his performance of that certain type by 30% at level 1 and 50% at level 10. And they are all on a 7 turn cooldown and they all last for one turn. So I guess it's cool in the fact that you could just pick which one you're going to use and buff up the cards. And then, you know, do the damage there. And then the next turn do the other one in theory. But unfortunately, he doesn't have 9 command cards in his deck. He only has, you know, the standard 6. So um, he doesn't have enough to make this uh, set of skills really work. It is really nice, his second skill is very nice because he does do some really good arts cards. But um, he has two buster cards and one quick card, so he's not really going to make good use of those at all. So um, his first and third skill are pretty terrible. So um, yeah, this is a really questionable kit of skills, but um, they all last one turn and they don't do anything for team support at all. Um, so yeah. There, it's just not a very good the second skill is good I will give it that for this character but the other two are just they're just not really good <laughs> so now moving on here to his class skills first up is the territory creation B which will increase his arts card effectiveness by 8% and the second one is the item construction C which will increase his debuff success rate by 6% so now let's move on here to his ascension for his first ascension he is going to need four caster pieces and 30,000 quantum pieces. For his second ascension, he is going to need 8 caster pieces, 15 proof of hero, and 100,000 quantum pieces. For his third ascension, he is going to need 4 caster monuments, 8 seeds of Yggdrasil, 4 ghost lanterns, and 300,000 quantum pieces. And then for his final ascension, he is going to need 8 caster monuments, 7 ghost lanterns, and 8 octuplet crystals. And then if you do decide to max his skills out from 1 to 10, you will need 12 gems of caster, 12 magic gems of caster, 12 secret gems of caster, 12 seeds of Yggdrasil, 30 proof of heroes, 48 evil bones, 7 spirit roots, and 1 crystallized lore, as well as 13,600,000 quantum pieces. So now let's go ahead and talk about his command cards and his noble phantasm. Uh, now for his command deck, I did pretty much just say it earlier when I was talking about his skills. But he does have one quick, two arts, and two buster. So, you know, he's not going to make any use of that third skill with the quick. He only has one quick card. So, it's really pointless there. At least he does have two buster cards. So, he can do some pretty solid damage with that. And he does have two arts cards as well. And he does, you know, his Noble Phantasm is also arts. Which is going to be a pretty solid Noble Phantasm, honestly. Which will deal medium damage to all enemies. And it will also decrease their critical hit rate for three turns. And then for the overcharge effects, it does have two of them. It will restore the HP of all of your allies and it will also increase their debuff resistance for three turns. So this is a pretty solid Null Phantasm, which almost makes this character usable in certain situations, especially if you're just focusing on art setups. But yeah, it does a pretty good um, variety of skills and it does some pretty solid damage as well. And there is also a interlude quest you can do to power this up, which will significantly boost the damage but that's pretty much all it does. Everything else will stay the same. So you're just going to get a damage buff, which is a much needed damage damage buff. So you're going to get a 200% increase for the overall damage, which is definitely nothing to sneeze at. So now for some of the craft essences you can use on this character. First up is going to be his maximum bond craft essence, which is going to be Spirit of the Great Plains, which while equipped will increase Noble Phantasm gain of all allies by 15% while on the field. So this is a pretty solid craft essence for this character because he's not very good at generating his Noble Phantasm. So this will help a little bit, but it is just your generic Noble Phantasm gain increase craft essence. Uh, some other options you could use for this character, primarily you just want to use him in arts cards, so you could just 
boost his arts performance with the formal craft for the 25% increase or projection for the 15 if you don't have it. So now let's talk about some of the servants you can use on this character or with this character. Now there are a few good servants that you could actually use to make this character somewhat usable. And uh, the first one is going to be Drake. So Drake is a pretty good choice here because of her, mainly because of her first skill, giving the Noble Phantasm strength increase and the attack increase, which will combo with Geronimo's, you know, let's just for the sake of argument just say his arts increase. And that gives you all three of the buffs you're looking for and you can come them together on the same turn and just do a huge chunk of damage. So that's really nice. She also does have a good second skill that will combo with him, which will increase his Noble Phantasm gain for three turns. As I previously stated, Geronimo's Noble Phantasm gain isn't really the best, so having her second skill here to help with that is really good. And she does have a similar deck, it's actually exactly the same, so you can make, you know, Arts Chains and Buster Chains. So that's really nice, and then her Noble Phantasm is also AoE, so you could do, you know, something of a wave clear with her and Geronimo, and you will get some critical starts as well. So that could help with your crit damage slightly because you pretty much lacking in the quick category. Next up on the list is going to be Mozart. Now he's going to be very helpful because he can also combo his arts increase with Geronimo's arts increase. So you're going to be getting a insane amount of arts card increase if they're both maxed out. So just having that, you know, the double arts buffs there is going to be making you do a ton of damage for that one turn. Unfortunately though, they only do last one turns each. so. And that's going to be a little bit of a drawback, but he does have a Arts Heavy deck with an Old Phantasm that is pretty big on debuffs, so that'll combo pretty good into Geronimo's strength and just do a ton of damage overall. Next up is going to be the main two that I talk about all the time. First up is going to be Waver. So Waver is pretty useful in like every team, but he does fill in some of the weaknesses of Geronimo, being able to help increase his Noble Phantasm gauge as well as buffing up his defense and his attack and providing him with crit strength so he does get extra buffs that he doesn't provide himself so he is a pretty solid combo but overall Tamano no Mai is definitely going to be the best option I feel for Geronimo you know she does have that third skill which will also increase arts card effectiveness so you can use that on Geronimo to get an insane amount she actually does provide more arts card increase than Mozart and it does last for three turns as opposed to one so you're going to be getting a lot more out of it than just that one turn burst Mozart will give and then she also can lower his cooldowns so you can recycle them if you can get the cooldowns lower you know it, it makes it a little bit more usable in the fact that you could potentially use one every single turn and then just make the most out of it and then she also can heal so combo their two Noble Phantasms together to keep healing your team and overall she just synergizes really well with him and if you do have her she almost makes Geronimo considerably worth using, probably not, but maybe in certain situations you could, you know, feel the need to go ahead and use him. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual star ranks. First up for his stats, he's going to get a 1.5 out of 5, he is ranked pretty much near the bottom of the barrel here in the stats and he is a caster as well which is going to just automatically hinder his damage to begin with next up for his skills um i'm feeling a little bit generous here so i did give him two stars that could easily change but his second skill is admittedly it's very good it's a, it's a very good skill i do wish he had other skills besides you know his first and his third skill but his second skill is admittedly very good for this character so I can't give him too much of a lower ranking than that but overall his skills are very selfish they don't offer anything to the team at all and they honestly don't even offer much to Geronimo himself outside of his second skill so two stars overall for his skills next up for his Noble Phantasm he does have a very solid Noble Phantasm deals a pretty solid amount of damage as well as healing your team so I will give this a three star overall for his Noble Phantasm. Next up for his survivability I am going to give him two and a half stars. This is tied in directly to his Noble Phantasm being able to heal so just because of that he's going to be able to survive just a little bit longer and that is why he gets his 2.5 rating in that. Next up for his versatility he will get two stars. As I've said previously he offers nothing to his team. None of his skills help his team at all and they're just buffs for himself so really he just gets two stars because of his noble phantasm 
which is a pretty solid Noble Phantasm, but other than that, he doesn't offer anything as far as versatility goes. So for his overall ranking, that will give him a 2.1 out of 5. He is really not that good of a servant, but he does have certain uses. He is admittedly pretty good in art setups, especially if you have Tamino no Mai. But other than that, he really is a, a seriously lacking servant who desperately needs his skills changed, but that will not happen. So that's going to wrap up this character spotlight, guys. We have one more to go tomorrow, and I am dreading it because of who it is. If you've been keeping up with these videos, you'll know who it is. Um, but I will do it. I promise I will do it. And I hopefully will do it tomorrow. And if not, I'll do it the day after that. But I will do it. And that will conclude the Wave 2 batch of the character spotlights. And I'll talk more about that more in the next video because I'll, I'll need to talk more... I'll need to talk about something else to <laughs> make the video a little bit longer. Um, I feel like I might be a little bit too critical for the next video. But enough about the next video. We'll talk about that next time. For now, I'll leave you guys here with Geronimo's Noel Phantasm. Don't forget to check the links below to my Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, and Discord. And I will see you guys next time. Sagotejin nariya.